Shelby, welcome over here at the WeShare Fest in, uh, in Paris, the sunny Paris. Beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, over there is the bar, so <laughs> I think we're going to focus Let's hurry over there. Um, so you're the co-founder of, of, of Relay Rides, but also now the, uh, the co-founder of, of, of Peers. That's right. So what is Peers? And first, uh, I, I got started in the collaborative economy in Kiva.org. Uh, so microfinance and then uh, Peter car sharing and now supporting the sharing company worker. Cool. And did you also co-found Kiva? I did not go found Kiva, so but I, I think I was like the sixth employee. So it was early days, uh, you know, a, a bunch of us locked in a room with nothing more than uh, you know passion and a great idea, and something really amazing came out the other side. All of, all of these things really at the core were, um, uh, you know, connecting people through technology to positively impact the offline world, and you know I think that's a you know a really exciting and empowering concept. And 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 oh, oh it's okay. And and what way did you make a step from from Kiva to your to, to your own organization, the Relay Rats? So, um, you know, I was just really inspired by what we built at, uh, at Kiva. And it was really, uh, uh, you know, I think um, there were sort of two concepts that really resonated with me. Um, one was, I already mentioned, the peer-to-peer the, the -peer nature. So, you know, this is 2006 when I got involved with Kiva. Um, uh, you know, I was on Facebook and, and, and things like that. But, you know, I, uh, most of the connections that I'd been making at the time online stayed online. And what I found really exciting about Kiva was that it, the connections that I was making through technology were actually impacting the offline world. And I thought that was incredibly transformational, incredibly powerful. Um, so I got excited about peer-to-peer marketplaces. Um, uh, the other thing that I got excited about was just um, you know, sort of the, the power of social entrepreneurship, the power of uh, you know, you know, small companies and organizations with a you know social mission and, and a conscience to you know drive great value in the world. And so. Um, you know, I sort of, uh, I got inspired to start a company of my own, um, and I, I ended up sort of like jamming together my two favorite ideas. So Kiva on the one hand, and then Zipcar on the other. So um, they put this together and, uh, and it created Relay Rides. Um, and, um, uh, you know, that, that was also a great experience and, um, you know, a, a really, you know, a tough, a tough struggle and battle and it's still ongoing. Um, you know, what uh, is tough, uh, or, or, or what is the most tough uh, in, the, in, the, in the struggle? What was that? What's the most toughest? Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, part of it is even just sort of like the, you know, emotional and psychological aspect. Like, you know, um, I was sort of a, you know, a solo uh, founder uh, for Relay Rides. Um, it was a, a lonely journey. <laughs> and, um, you know, you sort of fly to the ceiling and, you know, hit the floor um, in the course of, you know, 15 minutes. And it's, uh, it's, it's a tough battle. Um, you know, a lot of really tough choices and it becomes very emotional. You know, become, it sort of becomes your baby. You get really wrapped up in it. So being able to sort of separate yourself and you know you are not your company, um, finding other ways you know, um, but um, it's a uh, you know it's we were trying to convince people of something new. You know I think whenever we first started, um, you know the, the, you know Airbnb hadn't really you know hadn't taken off yet. It was you know 2008 when I first came up with the idea, um, you know trying to convince somebody that they should let a stranger drive their car, which seemed crazy. You know. Um, you want a stranger to drive my car? I don't want my husband to drive my car. Like, what are you talking about? And um, you know, you know, seven short years later, you know, it, it, it seems totally reasonable now. So, um, you know, it was uh, it was exciting to sort of you know be building relay rides at a time when many other peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces and sort of the whole sharing economy, um, you know, grew and evolved. And it, what do you yeah. think? Why do the the, the 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 key factors from that change from okay, I'm going to. Uh, let my wife drive my car till okay. I'm going to let a completely stranger drive my car. Um, I think it was that there was a number of these companies that were sort of popping up at the same time, and it sort of uh, enabled people to, you know, to 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 build trust in these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. Um, and you know, I think that the, the marketplaces were designed to build trust. You know, uh, all, most of the marketplaces have uh, have a peer-to-peer -peer rating system built in. Uh, I really realize we have very sophisticated fraud and identity theft features. Um, you know, we're taking technology and using that in, in a way to sort of uh, recreate the trust um, and you know, uh, making it possible for people to trust a stranger. So, um, you know, I think that as somebody was able to uh, rent a room on Airbnb or you know, rent a car through Relay Rides or hire a Task Rabbit, um, they have an experience through one of these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. And you know, they might be hesitant in, in the first place, but after they try, it's like, oh. That was that was actually great, you know. Like that was a great experience. I got, you know, a great car, a cooler car. It was a fun convertible, you know, with an awesome sound system that I wouldn't have gotten from Hertz or Avis. And I got it from a friend. I got it, uh, you know, 
Um, I got it from this guy Shelby, and I got to talk with him, and he told me about his car, and you know, um, I had a personal connection with him, and like, wasn't that great? Um, and so then it becomes a little bit less crazy to you know, to rent a room on Airbnb, or even maybe have somebody you know stay in your apartment on Airbnb. So. You know, trust, I think, was the biggest you know, sort of barrier to overcome, and I think that as people sort of started to have a positive experience in one of these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, it became easier to um, to take a leap to, to trying out another one. And 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 then one because uh, in the end now you're also one of the co-founders of of, of Pearson Dark. So 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 what what did you miss or what did you saw in the market that you thought, okay, I need to bring another solution for the things sure. I'm, I'm missing? Well, so you know. Um, so Relay Rides became sort of a, a part of this, you know, growing conversation that's now been called the sharing economy, and it was interesting to sort of be a part of that conversation from the beginning. Um, and I was watching the conversation closely, and so, you know, um, a couple years ago the, the conversation started to turn, um, and it started to, you know, to sort of focus on, um, you know, all these, you know, companies and industries were were, were 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 growing. It's no longer like, wow, isn't this cute? People are sharing. It's like. Wow, we have a couple of multi, we have several multi-billion-dollar industries. These are, you know, these are big, and you know, I guess I became convinced that the, you know, as these um, these industries grew and evolved, I knew that there would be changes. I knew there'd be opportunities. I knew there'd be needs, and as I thought about what the biggest sort of changes and opportunities and needs were, I kept thinking about the worker. I kept thinking about the person that was earning money and relying on income through these new marketplaces, and how incredibly inspiring and, and empowering it was that people can, you know, uh, take their lives into their own hands, start earning money on their own terms, work whenever they need to, work around their kids' schedule, work around their, uh, you know, their school, um, you know, being able to earn more or less money in a week depending on what their needs were. Um, I found that to be an incredibly interesting opportunity. But these workers are doing so outside of the protections and infrastructure of a traditional job. And I don't think many of them realize that. It's easy to sign up for these marketplaces. You click a couple buttons and you can start to earn. And they don't realize they're sort of starting a small business and they're doing so on their own. And so um, you know, I became very passionate about finding ways to empower and protect these workers. And so that's what we're doing at Piers. Um, you know, we're trying to, you know, to sort of uh, rethink the protections that, that people need to be successful in this new economy. Okay, and 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 uh, you, yeah, you kind of found it uh, also with, uh, with with Robin Chase. Uh, no, oh, so uh, so so Robin. Um, I was using similar words. So uh, Robin recently wrote a book called Peers Inc. It's a great book. I think yeah. it's really interesting. Um, and uh, you know, she's she's sort of talking about you know, the, the the business of, of peers uh, in Peter different marketplaces interacting together. Uh. So um, uh, so Robin, you know, she's uh, you know a, a, a brilliant woman. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed getting to know her. Um, you know, but Pure Zinc is different than, okay, than okay. Pure Zinc. Uh, so okay, it sounds just, it sounds <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh, I just saw also your talk here 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 on stage. And in the beginning of course, also uh, when you saw the video, I thought, okay, this is another insurance company for the sharing economy. But I, I think that, 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 that there's much more. Sure. So so so, what are you doing? Uh, and and also what are your uh, and also what are your ambitions? Sure. So, um, but I guess I can uh, mm. you know. So Peers, uh, ha it's a, a global community of a quarter of a million people. It's the world's largest independent sharing economy community. Um, and uh, we talked to our community to find out um, you know, what, what they needed, what they liked. And we heard two things. We heard that they loved the flexibility of this work, um, but they were concerned about the financial uncertainty. And so what we want to do is we want to find ways to maintain this uh, flexibility while addressing the financial uncertainty. And I think that um, you know, ways that we can do that are, um, you know, uh, you know, f finding ways to, to recreate sort of the, the infrastructure from a job. So things like, you know, insurance, benefits, training, four hundred one k, retirement, um, you know, all these things you should get from a job. And so, um, we've started to um, you know, to create a couple of products, and I think uh, ultimately we envision a marketplace that sort of brings lots of these different products and services together. So people are able to, um, to you know, to, to, to find uh, these things that used to make up a job on their own um, and, and sort of through an independent marketplace. So an example of this is uh, we created um, a, a, a program called Keep Driving. And so Keep Driving is a vehicle replacement product uh, for, uh, for ride-sharing drivers. So uh, if a ride-sharing driver gets in an accident, um, insurance will hopefully cover the repair of their car. But what it doesn't cover is lost income during that period. So the average car is out for you know, three to four weeks uh, while it's being repaired or replaced. Uh, and if you rely on income from those platforms, um, it can have a really major negative impact on your life. And so um, we created Keep Driving. Uh, if you're a member and you get in an accident, 
um, we'll give you a car for uh, for a month, for up to a month, um, while your car is being repaired. So that ensures that you're able to continue to earn and not sort of missing a beat in your income. So I think this is an example of sort of a, a new protection, a new benefit um, that's responding to this new economy. It's not just sort of taking old protections and putting them into, you know, and pushing new workers uh, to them. I, I think that a lot of times that actually doesn't fit, it doesn't solve the problem. No. So this is an attempt to say, what are the new uh, vulnerabilities? What are the new protections that are needed and responding by creating new products? And uh, in the end, this discussion is, 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 is much broader than, than only the Collaborative economy. It's, it's also that's also uh, uh, there was also some talks today about about the, the freelancer union and things like that. So, and what way do you also work with uh, with government? Because yeah, uh, you're um, now filling a gap from the <coughs> uh, 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 crowd and commercial side, but in the end there also has to be some changes made by government. Like in the Netherlands, there's also a, a really big gap in rights what you have a, as a freelance worker or uh, when you are contracts. So, uh, you know, I think that there certainly is a role for government. I think there's a way that we can collaborate with them as well. Um, you know, so, you know, for example, uh, there, there are employee classifications in the United States. Um, you know, you have uh, either an employee or an independent contractor, and you sort of have to pick between those two. Um, this type of work really seems to fall between those two. It doesn't really seem to fit well into either of these categories, um, which, you know, which is really challenging. And so I think that um, one thing that we can do, uh, you know, with, with government regulators, is to take a look at these these classifications, see how they can be either revised or possibly create a new third classification, maybe something that, that sits in the middle. There's a new, um, or there's a classification called a dependent contractor in Canada and Germany, um, and it carries some of the benefits, uh, you know, of being an employee with a lot of the flexibility of an independent contractor. So maybe that's the solution. I don't, I don't really yeah. know, but you know, I think that there is. I needed an opportunity to be sort of taking a hard look uh, at these structures uh, and seeing how we can improve them in a modern context. Yeah, yeah I think it's also that, 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 that uh, like in the Netherlands, the government is not really taking uh, uh, freelancers serious. And in, in, in the Netherlands, because we have a huge amount of freelancers, it's also because it's really expensive to hire people. Uh, it, it's a higher risk. So uh, when you hire me and I get sick, you have to pay me for two, yeah, two years. Sure. So that, that's uh, a big risk. Uh, but in the Netherlands, uh, uh, they, uh, the name they have for freelancers is uh, is, is independent uh, 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 in, uh, 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 professionals without personnel. So so they are already say okay. So you so you are working independent and ah uh, you, uh, you have any personnel? No, I know I don't want it. <laughs> but I think it's also a a, 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 a a mindset thing from government that they really have to first they have no idea what to do with it, but they also really need to have the. The, the focus on, on the, the, the developments of the of the, uh, the, the the freelance workers. Absolutely. And when you look, because there are two two stories in in the collaborative economy about labor. The, the the commercial stories by the marketeers, like with Uber, they say, okay, but you are going to be an Uber driver besides your job. And the other side, what you were saying, okay, but there are many people who are doing this full time and creating their own jobs like this. How do you see the uh, the, the balance between the uh, individual workers who are really going full time uh, uh, for a job, or uh, workers who are just doing it for a couple of hours a week to get some F as, as some extra income. You know, I, I don't see it as a battle. I see it as um, you know uh, that we need to create flexible structures that sort of accommodate you know both of those uh, both of those use cases. I think they're both really important. Um, you know, and I think that. Uh, you know, even an individual worker, the way that they might utilize these platforms, you know, could vary dramatically over time. You know, um, uh, maybe they lose their job and they start using, you know, the sort of one of these marketplaces, you know, full time. Uh, you know, while, uh, maybe then they they bump down to half time, and in, in the re you know, in the other, you know, um, the other part of their time, they're going to school in some sort of training program. Um, they're using this as a way to. Um, uh, you know, to, to learn a new career, or maybe they're investing in starting a new business, and so over time, then you know, sort of their need for income might go up and down. Yeah. So you know, I, I think it's important that we design flexible structures that are going to accommodate, you know, multiple different, you know, multiple types of uses and multiple people. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's that's just not how things are. You know, things right now are, are very black and white. It's either employee or independent contractor, um, and uh, you know, I, I think we can do better. Yeah. And what do you think about the, res the, the re uh, responsibility of the platforms? Uh, because now uh, people who are working for platforms can have like the, uh, the insurance you're, you're offering. But what do you think uh, also for the future? 
will be the the, the, re the responsibility of the platforms? Uh, 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 do you think they are also going to 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 provide this kind of service, or are you going to, uh, or are you already talking to them to work together? Or well, so it's a little bit challenging. Again, it's yeah, these are uh, these classifications are, are not serving us well. So uh, currently, you know, most of the uh, these platforms um, they, they classify their workers as independent contractors. Um, what that means is they can't provide the benefits. Um, as soon as you start providing the workers benefits, they become employees. Yeah. Um, and so even if they recognize a need to provide or a desire to provide health insurance or other benefits to their employees, they can't. Um, or to their workers, they can't. Um, so, uh, so, you know, I think that first we'd have to see some, um, some legal regulatory, you know, reform and that's, I think that is really necessary. Um, but I think that the, the platforms absolutely do uh, have a responsibility to support their workers and identify the vulnerabilities they're having, figure out how, this, you know, how to solve them. Uh, we can get creative, we will work with them, and there are other companies that will work with them. But I think that um, you know, the, the, the platforms have a responsibility to do this. I think it's ultimately not serving their own interests if they don't. Um, if they wait until there are problems, if they wait until people are injured, if they wait until you know, there are uh, you know, major implications um, uh, of not providing these protections and benefits, I think they're going to get regulated. I think that they're going to, um, uh, their regulations and, and, and laws will be forced on them. Yeah. And so if yeah. instead they can play a part of that, if they can, yeah. if they can help to proactively define solutions that, that address the workers' needs, I think that everyone's going to be better off. Yeah, I think that it is, it is proactive actually it's really important because uh, if you go, uh, because else the, the regulation will be uh, designed a, a, as a response on something that goes wrong and that's not the, the right start <laughs> to start the change of regulation. And, and when you look at yourself as, as a person, because I, I think you got a really interesting background in, in, in what you did first at Kiva, then exploring the sharing collaborative economy uh, re, uh, uh, with real rights, but then really from your from your uh, uh, deep motivation now uh, uh, with, you, uh, with peers. So what, what's, what drives you? Uh? I guess I just fundamentally believe in a world, um, uh, I, I think that peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces are a good thing for the world. Um, you know, uh, and you know, I think it's sort of like a natural sort of uh, system for our society. You know, if you think of you know, the way that our sort of economy and society evolved, you know, uh, we, we used to live in small villages, and we had little marketplaces, and they worked great. Uh, you know, you had um, in a small village. You know, in, you know, centuries ago, you had you know, you probably had you know, like a small baker and a butcher and um, and a cobbler, um, and everybody they worked well together. They had a reputation. They knew that they had to provide a good good service, or else they wouldn't be able to sell it. Somebody else would come in and you know and, and take their business. Um, you know, and then we saw the rise of the industrial era, and you know, sort of. Uh, the growth of cities and then um, you know major corporations and and, and, um, and suburbs and so you know, I think that as you know society you know the structure changed these marketplaces no longer really served you never you no longer had a personal repu identity and, and relationship and reputation and so you know these small marketplaces didn't really work in terms of large you know serving a large group of people I think technology has changed that technology is reinventing the ways that we interact with people it's reinventing reputation it's reinventing trust uh, it's providing uh, the ability to have these small, intimate marketplaces on a large scale. I think it's really transformational. Ultimately, I believe that a peer-to-peer -peer exchange is uh, a more efficient, pure, better form way to interact. And so, you know, I'd like to see these, you know, these marketplaces and these systems continue to grow and evolve. Um, you know, and if we can play a small part of, you know, helping to do that through peers, um, you know, I, I, you know, be, be, uh, you know, very, uh, feel very grateful. And, and what are you now doing different with peers than when you started with uh, Real Rights? But you also mentioned before, okay, Real Rights was really also a, a right for, me, uh, for myself personally and emotionally, uh, with the ups and downs in 15 minutes. Uh, 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 How do, uh, and also feeling lonely. Yeah. How do you prevent this happening again with peers? Um, you know, I think, you know, first of all, just working with a great team, you know, people that you, know, you, you love and enjoy. Um, and second of all, um, uh, you know, I think that I've, I've grown a lot as a person. I've sort of grown, you know, learned to separate myself from the company. You know, I am more, you know, I am not just peers, right? It's something that I, that I really care about. But, um, you know, so, uh, and maybe, you know, just sort of being a little bit more, you know, having t you know, thicker skin after going through it once. But I know what I'm getting myself into this time. Yeah, and, and, and look at, uh, at, at, the, at the conversation over here at the We Share Fest. Um, I really see there are, because everybody is searching, everybody, is, and, and it's Baker School because everybody can be part of the search for, okay, where are we going to and how can we make the best out of it. But it's also the other side of it is that many discussions, presentations are about technique and about processes. 
uh, there are hardly any presentations about leadership and about human. How, what do you think? Uh, um, um, how, how can we shift this discussion and, and also uh, get more to, uh, 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 to the human and, and solution part instead of keeping uh, into the process and, tech and, uh, and technical part? Well, I don't know. I think there's sort of a time and place for everything. You know, I, I've really enjoyed the, the programming at, at WeShare. I think that you know, it's been a really great conversation about how we can collaborate, what the issues are, how we can address those issues, and how we can make, move forward. Um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the concept uh, is lost in translation. You know, I think it's sort of trying to ask the question of like, um, you know, where are we going on this path? You know, like it started off in the right direction, and you know, there are some negative influences. And there's a question now of, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And how do we continue to make sure that we find the right path? So, you know, I think that you know the the conversation we've been having here has been a great one. Um, you know, and I do want to make sure that you know that we have those conversations. You know, um, uh, about leadership and uh, you know the right way to grow companies. But um, I think they happen in a different place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think also maybe we are too desperate, uh, focused on 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 finding answers. Uh, in a, uh, a transitions where the answer will be maybe in two years. Yep. So, so maybe we can better focus on asking better questions. Yeah, okay. Thank you for your time and uh, great. good luck. It was, it was great to meet you. <laughs> Thanks a lot.